What up my freaks, Rowena Sensite here with part 14 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we had ourselves some pretty darn cool battles, seeing fancy Order Profundum stuff, the snakes, uh, Dagon and the Abyssal Revenant as well as the Empty Dead, and then the fancy Warrior stuff Sendance. of the, uh, what were they called, the Dusk Reavers, uh, those ships and rocket launchers and all that stuff stuff. I'm excited to get a ship of our own, which we will be able to do as soon as we upgrade those empty dead into the fourth sisters. So, and just gotta get a little bit of XP for that abyssal revenant. As for what we're going to do this time, we've nearly reached Jarnagrund, where we will raise up a new blood keep for Rabarash and... And we've also nearly reached Nong Chang out here as well, so a new blood keep and a new library very much on in the cards, as it were. Now between the episodes, I uh, did a little bit of admin, not a crazy amount, but we were now able to raise more disciples of Aberash, so this army will get a little bit stronger at last. In fact, I was thinking about maybe adding a few more... Hmm, Blood Dragon Neophytes here. I mean, it's going to be a long time before we can get even more Disciples of the Path, or at the very least, more insignificant numbers. So we could just keep using Blood Dragon units, and then eventually when we replace them, or as we replace them, we give them to Rudiger. And actually, speaking of Rudiger, you go here. The Hidden Threat, Part 2. Uh, the Slippery Dusk Reavers have finally been cornered, my sire. We have located a hidden facility deep within the jungle that holds something they desire. They desire, my sire. Uh, though we know not what they seek, we can be sure they will have no choice but to face us and do battle. We have sent word to all who walk the path, let, let all who hear the clarion call answer in this time of need. Alrighty. And... What was that? Huh, okay, neat. Uh, let's see, Dragon Scale, Martial Valor, Casualty or Punishment. So was that a worthy foe battle or is this some other battle? It is part of this thing. Hmm, curious. Actually, also speaking of the Dusk Reavers, uh, there was a comment from the uh, from uh, the mod creator that the... Hmm, should he make you raid? Hmm, yeah, just keep moving. You just have to approach Aberrash. Uh, what was I saying? Something about something. Ah, yes, yeah, so there was a bit of an issue with the sort of speech, the pre-battle speech slash cutscene of that quest battle oh, last yes. time around, but it has now been fixed for those of you who uh, get the chance to do that. I urge you to do so because this mod is uh, pretty darn awesome. And the bright side of that is also that, uh, well, I did not have a stroke during the <laughs> during the cutscene because I got very confused at the... Uh, the first few oh, seconds. Gosh. Anyway, now let's get started, shall we? Abrash, you're going to be attacking the Falls of Doom here. Uh, yeah, I might as well level up a few of those Blood Dragon Neophytes or whatever. Uh, let's declare war. I was just wondering, will they be... Yeah, no, they're not allied to anybody. I'm not even sure that they can ally with anybody, but maybe they can. Uh, let's go Martial Valor. And let's go, I don't know, four. One, two, three, four. Ooh, that, uh, okay, that might have been a little bit too much, but you know what? We've nearly, ooh, actually, a moment. We have nearly destroyed the, no. Ow. Oh. We'll have to wait until next turn to get you, won't we? All right, fine. Uh, we do still have to get you, little army. In Wallach's name. In Wallach's name, indeed. All right, and then you can get the, I don't know, XP. You can then, ooh, that should give you another ghosty unit, which is always nice. And on top of that, this ghosty unit is ready to level up to Phantoms of the First Keep Knights. And then we simply get another one like this. There we go, three ghosties now. Very nice, very nice. And Zach, can you raid? You cannot, but I guess you can march stance and start heading southward. It's time. We're heading to Castle Carcassonne and the library there. We do have to take it and we do have to activate its quest after all. Uh, Wallach, you're headed to Nong Chang, who is currently occupied by, oh, minus four by the western provinces. Sadly, they kind of like us. Might have been nice to actually ally with them and borrow a few units or a few range units, but oh well, not a big deal. Anarch, we can start moving you southward as well, I guess, and I have been meaning to get another... L uh, nine out of nine, okay. Uh, all right, we need to do we'll do that after we take Sharnagrund. All right, fine. 
You could raid, or you could go into an camp stance way. Do you need to level anything up? I mean, I guess you could get the snightly drill. Ah, eh, fine, go for it. And you gotta move out here anyway. You also probably get more uh, ordo. Wait, do we have any capacity for... A moment. Yeah, we can at least get one of these guys, although... You know, we'll, we'll wait a turn. I'm not entirely sure that they'd be needed right now, but I would like you to grab this for the bonus unit XP and casualty replenishment rate, which ain't bad. Anyway, Aberash, uh, let's upgrade you three. Two. Blood Dragon Neophytes, like so. And then we won't have enough for another one, but uh, we... Will after this fight, presumably. I think we're just gonna auto resolve it and hope it doesn't do too much damage. Okay, it'll hurt our bloodkin thralls, but don't it always. We'll raise the place. Got a free banner of swiftness and we'll go into encamp stance and go this way. And yes, that did indeed give us enough for another bloodkin thrall to be leveled up into another blood dragon neophyte. There we go. Certainly gonna be strong enough now to take on Jarna Grund and most. Ooh, and I just had another idea. We now have more of these guys. You know what? These guys need to start leveling. It's time to upgrade them, especially since we have the dragon scales. Time to upgrade them to the Disciples of the Path Inner Circle. And we did get to check these guys out once in the very, very early game when we uh, got Aberash on the field because he brought some of them out to play. And night. you can upgrade to a knight. There we go. More units to try out. I'm glad these guys only cause dragon scales and not uh, valor since uh, we still need so, so much more. All right. And then obviously as soon as we up get this guy at a high enough level at rank nine, we'll immediately upgrade him to become another knight. And then we'll figure out how we want to do the balance. I also still want one of each type of hero in this army as well. And just because. It just feels right. Anyway, let's keep moving. And then we can end the turn. Proceed to Jarna Grund, which is sure to be a great fight. Abyssal Revenant, you got your second unit of empty dead. And you have a hero on the way as well. Uh, we can, I guess, pop you into a camp stance. Pop you right here. And Zachariah, ooh, hello, Gorok. And Zachariah Saratap can continue raiding. And just in case we fight Gorok, we will, however, level up. Mm, we have got to, I guess, go through Warriors of the Wandering Path. More XP after all. And then you, sir. Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer and ooh, Warp Lightning. While I won't pretend that Warp Lightning doesn't tempt me, it's still not something we'd probably be using over Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer on the Abyssal Revenant himself. It's got another point in Kiss of the Deep, though. All right. And we'll see if this guy attacks us. And we also have room for that hero who's on the way. Reinhardt Van Hell. I would really, really love to move you out. I mean, maybe we could just send you around to Zuffbar at the very least raid or something. Time for a feast. Start moving. Move up here. I, 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 I really need him to actually do something. It's bothering me. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't even know even if he can take as of bar, but uh, well, we'll find out as we go. Uh, I think these guys had two full stacks there. Maybe if we can catch one out. I hope the Castle Drakenhoff doesn't immediately get attacked as well, because there ain't no way we're going to be able to take the, like, five armies that were out there. Uh, all right, well, either way, I believe we're good. All right, so let's double-check buildings. Let's double-check double Diplo, and then we'll move. Itza and the Golden Order want peace. Well, that's not going to happen. Skip buildings, characters, blah, 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 blah. End the turn. See if anybody attacks us, and if not, we'll simply head to Jarna Grund. And, of course, by taking it, increase our army capacity. Oh, and I guess if we take Nong Chang, that'll also increase our army capacity. Hello. These guys will attack us. Ooh, they got a Lava, a Ragnarok, and a very solid number of trolls here. Sounds like a fun time to me. I guess we're fighting this one. Pyrrhic victory. This army is still relatively weak after all. Now let's get to it. Oh, wait. Before we get to it, uh, the engagement threshold was reached. This will be an hour episode, and the offer still stands. I believe it was 300 likes and 40 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Go.
My might cannot be matched. Alrighty, here we go. This should be pretty nice. And ooh, these guys are looking pretty darn good in uh, this particular uh, lighting. Yeah, the Drakenhof Templars uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, night sky up above. Uh, Anarch is still on foot or on horse, and thus will be having a little bit more of a difficult time getting to the enemy lord as compared to his hero units. But well, and we will deal in. Huh? Wait one second. You have the red glow on your cape, and you don't have a cape at all. Okay, I was wondering why the uh, big difference in the glow. Anyway, we got two stacks arrayed against this. Should be pretty darn fun. Certainly reminding me of the Archeon campaign, where I just fought the biggest battle of the campaign so far, which was against four full Elite Endgame stacks of orcs. Uh, sort of an echo of that. Lots of works today, I guess. Anyway, uh, we are moving on in, though we did peel away one of our units of Drakenhof Templars just to get to this goblin wolf chariot, and we peeled them away in order to cast that uh, Storm of the Night upon the chariot, reducing their speed by 60 down to 40, and allowing the uh, Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knights to close and rip those chariots apart, just so that we don't have to spend the entire battle in giving chase to them. Uh, looks like Storm of Night came in fairly handy there. Anarch has moved in with one of his champions and they immediately get completely surrounded by trolls. They'll have to slowly but surely work their way through them. At least until the rest of our army arrives, which is, well, I guess also slowly, but also surely, moving in. Uh, here we go, there is another one of our Drakenop Templar champions trying to get to the enemy lords and two Black Orc big bosses. I was kind of hoping that we'd get the... Uh, uh, that we get Anarch fighting the enemy lord, and uh, then the uh, two champions fighting the two Black Orc big bosses, but alas, and didn't quite manage it. Anyway, uh, here we have a nice little contest of River Trolls versus Drakenhof Templar veterans, though uh, the charge from the uh, River Trolls has done quite the number on the vets, which is pretty interesting, and the enemy unit is only losing slightly by comparison. This is a tier 5 versus a tier 2 unit. Not. So, not a great matchup for the Drakenhob Templar great weapons, and by the looks of it, as the trolls are giving uh, lots and lots of damage to them, and all the while a regular Drakenhob Templar warrior unit hits them in the back. Otherwise, the rest of our army has arrived and moved into the fray. The Bloodkin Thralls and Adept Knights are working together to try to chase down the enemy pump wagons here. Uh, main line looks like the enemy has sent an Arachnorok to help, but once again, we do have our two champions now, and they should be able to handle the Arachnorok. The rocks. I like the uh, you know, little red elements of the barding really brings these uh, units together as well. Alright, just watching the Dragonop Templar champions fight a little bit since we haven't seen them, uh, well, let's say too much this campaign as yet. Although clearly that's going to change. And same with the Profundum champions as we're going to get them on the field. Anyway, the bounce power is roughly even, maybe a teensy bit in our favor right now. We have a lot of enemy units engaged with us and mostly it's our infantry fighting. We do have our Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knight sort of peeling around and going into the back of the enemy armies. We can see that they're destroying archers and such. Or at the very least, stopping them from fighting in plenty of goblin air as they charge on through. And we do have to also keep an eye on that Arachnorok. Let's start deleting a units as once again the Drakenop Templars are still a little bit on the more fragile side. Big old melee in the center. We see that uh, soul siphoning effect coming down. There's another of the Storm the Knights as well. Mostly to do the damage rather than the speed reduction this time around. I'm not looking pretty nice and cinematic with all these effects. And there's more of that soul siphoning. 
And it looks like we're starting to go after the enemy lord in here now that the enemy doesn't have nearly as many units uh, blocking him. The balance of power has continued to creep in our favor and is now at about 70%. The leftmost flank, we've had a couple of units of trolls try to face off against us, but it looks like the Drakenhop Templars and Thrall did manage to hold. The enemy rear line has by and large collapsed, and there were actually quite a few more units than we can see here. It's just that the enemy army spawned and deployed near the edge of the battle or battlefield rather and thus uh, the uh, archers or at least some of the units that we were forced to chase with our thrall knights and just immediately got off the map well what can you do All right, just watching the glorious spectacle, and I love the charges. <laughs> While the melee and brawl is going on, I like it just periodically there are goblins that just fly overhead. Maybe everybody's uh, too busy uh, paying attention to the fighting uh, for that. I mean, everybody within the brawl here, but I find it still quite entertaining myself. Anyway, it looks like the Arachnorok needs to be targeted now. We move on in some Drakenhop Templar vets as well as Anarch and some of the Thrall Adept Knights until we can surround the thing and bring it down. I don't believe we actually have any fire damage or at least fire damage dealing units in this army, so all the fire resistance on the big lava spike ain't gonna pan out and it looks like nothing's gonna pan out for the enemy army as finally and the entire host will shatter and the battle is ours very nice very nice. I do wish that we had gotten the duels between the uh, Black Orc big bosses and Lord and our own a Lord and Hero but oh well and they certainly gave us a nice fight All right, very nice, very nice, and no problem at all. We certainly did take some damage, and it was a close victory, but we were able to heal it up, or at least all but 27 of it up after the end of the battle now uh, i did notice several of our units of drakenhof templar infantry struggling against things like trolls by the looks of it we're going to want to get uh, well cav as an uh, templarum cav up and running when we can Mm, definitely going to take a decent amount of valor to do so, but hopefully we'll get, what was it, 3,000, 4,000 reward uh, from defeating the uh, Witch Hunters, so uh, that will hopefully allow us to get a couple of those cav units that we desperately need to deal with things like the Arachnorok and the Trolls. And yes, we have two heroes plus Anarch himself, but they can't be everywhere at once. Uh, we are going to... Mm, if the camp failed, we may need to heal up, so let's heal up just in case. As then, well, then I guess we were still in our own territory, so... Okay, well, whatever, whatever, too late now. <laughs> too late now, ambush foiled, but at least, yeah, we're still at full HP, and a bunch of enemy killed in battle, ambush foiled for Aberash as well, but I don't think he cares. And more importantly, we now have... Growth plus 30 and a little bit of armor for Depth Guard. Uh, well, as soon as we get a lot of Depth Guard on a field, that'll be significant. Uh, but I am excited about the additional growth as it'll mean more armies and stuff. I see that the Warhost of Jar is nearby. I'm kind of tempted to kill off this army, but on the other hand... Well, they don't like us very much. I mean, they don't hate us, but they don't dislike us. Hmm. Actually, as soon as we declare war in the northern provinces, they might like us a little bit more, but we would never ally with a... Uh, well, okay. Except Wallach, we would never ally with any chaos force. Uh, though, once again, any end time stuff should be taken with a grain of salt. And, oh! Aberash's encampment failing means that his army is damaged, eh? Hmm, that's kind of concerning. But what can you do? Anyway, we're headed to Jarnagrund. We'll besiege it, move around a little bit, and then head on into the fight. And ooh, valiant defeat. I like the sound of that. Should be a fun battle, I think. Anyway. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Nung Chang, once again. The fact that these guys like us. Oh, well. 
They are at war with Clan Eshin and the Blessed Dread, both of which are currently undiscovered, which means we have to directly declare war on them and thereby all the other Cathayan factions. But they hold a Blood Keep library, and thus it has to be done. No Away you go, Wallach. I assume, yeah, there's basically nothing in terms of the garrison here, so we'll attack it directly. I think every single thing in this army also has magic damage, so we don't really need the Lichbone Pennant, and might be able to replace it with something a little bit more useful. Uh, we're going to construct an... I think an Ordo Profundum Keep here. Mostly because I think uh, those that's the order we have the least amount of keeps with, so that's the one we'll go with, and we can immediately build the library, which is what we've been saving our metal for. Lovely. The library of Marienburg. A wrong library. Stands in the testament to the cosmopolitan nature of the Illustrious City, but yeah. Huh. Library of Marienburg. Anyway, whoa, 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 whoa. We have a... Huh. Are we even able to raise a blood keep beside another blood keep? I'd be curious. Melee attack was one fighting against dwarf elves and men. I didn't even know that we had other landmarks available other than the uh, library. We don't have anything at Mordheim. Hmm. Might be specific to some Cathay and stuff. And what do you want, game? What? Do you oh, the orders thing. Yes, <laughs> it wanted to update it. Yeah, Library of Lamia and Library of Carcassonne are the only ones left. Of course, we still have a lot of quests to move our way through. Zaki, you are headed southward. Uh, let's move you in regular stance, I think. And yes, we could raid, but let's not risk it. Uh huh, that's why. Uh, Arguilon, well, a single Arguilon force is not going to attack us. We got dwarfs around, we got elves around, and we'll still have to move through Fort Saul. Which has some defenders. Maybe worth fighting, maybe not, I don't know. I guess we'll find out later on. Hans of Wolf, uh, let's attack you. Uh, we can auto resolve that. We got the settlement garrison here, so there's really no need to fight it, especially since we've seen uh, Edmund's army absolutely obliterate these uh, little armies several times at this point. Take the money because we're in our own territory anyway, and thus no need to heal. And there we go. 4,000 martial valor for that. Fantastic. All right, which hunter's threat reduced, though for how long remains to be seen? You can raid in our own territory while you heal. Alrighty, and ooh. Also, since you defeated that army, you get yourself another Fleshwalker Mongrel. Oh, lovely. And once again, I'm reasonably sure I'm eventually going to trade the Drakenhof Sky Reavers to uh, this army. But obviously not right now. Anyway, you can keep moving, I guess. It's going to be a while while we cross them. And I didn't want to go this way because I didn't want to unnecessarily trespass in uh, Vlad's territory. And B, I also didn't want this guy to suddenly declare war on us and destroy this army completely with his five stacks nearby, which is a distinct possibility. Uh, Anarch. I guess you can raise the high peaks now. I certainly don't see Skarsnik, who we are kind of saving for Aberash, but if he's not here... On to resolve that. Why did this unit get so badly hurt? Game hates those guys in particular. Raise and then return to our own territory. A lovely end. We'll most likely fail in our encampment, but whatever. Not a big deal either way. Audacious for you, Griswold Zubisendorf has acquired a... Not a defeat trait, but a, a Disciples of Aberash trait. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Oh, I got four points. Hmm, you know, we'll probably assign those before the next fight. What I'm more excited about is getting a couple of our Ordo Profundum Knights up and running. The uh, Demigriff and Inner Circle Knights for them looked really, really fantastic. Does it matter which ones? Uh, let's do the last two, I guess. All right, you. And do we have capacity for two? Nah, we only have the capacity for one. All right, fine, fine, fine. We'll do two. It's not like the capacity is wasted. In fact, two is really all we need for a single army. Because we can just sort of stagger their upgrades. And they do level reasonably quick anyway, so, you know, that's fine. Especially with all the buffs that we have to uh, various forms of a leveling. I'm gonna name a unit myself, which I rarely do, but just for fun, you're gonna be the Draken Hooves. Yes, yes, it should be Hooves, but Draken Hoof, Draken Hooves. Ha ha ha. Okay, good. <laughs> 
Uh, gotta amuse yourself sometimes, folks. All right, let's see what else we got here. Edmund, we've set up Rudiger. You're still following Aberash. Just in case in camp, yeah. I mean, what's the likelihood that these guys actually declare war on us? We're strength rank one. I'd say pretty low, right? And just to destroy this little army? Oh, let's, uh, well, let's hope that, uh, we're correct on that. Let's move everybody else around, then we head on into Jarnagrun and check out those uh, inner circle guys. Uh, Zacharias. Gorok is nearby. Ooh, another potential battle. Several potential battles. Abyssal Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abyssal Knight, you land here. You're going to join this army. All right, let's move everybody who isn't fighting, and then we'll move everybody who is. Uh, you, you're still looking for Astrogoth Iron Hand, and you found him really, really far. We'll probably have to return here with Aberash at some point, if we have the time. I guess you can keep an eye out on these guys. What can you do? You can assault Garrison, huh? I was hoping that you could steal tech, though on the other hand, I guess it's not the most important thing in the world. For us at this point. Mm, I think we're looking okay. Alright, I'm gonna say that the Aberash fight is gonna be more interesting, so... And this is the one that we're gonna do. That's a lot of elites. The Fire Glaives in fairly decent numbers there. Uh, definitely gonna be a lot of armor piercing to contend with. Uh, they also have... Huh, I wonder where Gorth the Cruel is. Oh, he's right here. I wonder if he has a more elite stack than this guy does, but uh, there's still fire glaives and stuff around. It still says it'll be a valiant defeat. Bunch of infernal iron sworn infernal guard there. Hell cannon is certainly going to be a potential concern. Anyway, oh, and we're still damaged. Now away we go. Or perhaps honor and death, or undeath, perhaps, perhaps. Anyway, here we go. I'm hoping that this is going to be a pretty fun fight, though, of course, no promises as to how it'll actually look here due to the uh, battle desyncs and that have been happening for the uh, past few patches or whatever. Anyway, we now have the Knights of the Path, or the Disciples of the Path, of uh, the Inner Circle and variety. They've got uh, smaller dragon mounts, and each one has a flag slash banner as well absolutely perfect plus i like the fact that abrash can uh, move into uh, into the battlefield with a sort of coterie of units with him as well he's not the only one flying around what he is now though is taking damage from some of the enemy fire glaives who are going to now get charged uh, for their trouble by our uh, by our inner circle units. There we go. Okay, gonna be a while before I get used to uh, calling that. And we do have some uh, infernal, um, infernal iron sworn up here as well, in addition to those fire glaives. So we're gonna have to try our best to work through them. Uh, camera work might get a little bit wonky here because it's up on the walls, so that's, uh, well, I guess that's to be expected. Also, I believe the enemy Hell Cannon did manage to knock off one of the knights here, but we did raise it back up, and Aberash knocks a few units down. Huh, did the corpse disappear once the, uh, hmm. Well, I know one of these guys died, but, uh, I don't know whether the corpse stays or not when the uh, resurrect dead combatants happens. Never actually considered that, but anyway. Anyway, looks like our Disciples of the Path Inner Circle are having a pretty darn decent time up here. And the Infernal Guard and with Fire Glaives and the Infernal Iron Sworn are all having a very, very bad then, or just about done. We're also moved up here. We have uh, gotten some zombies on top of the walls, and this allowed us to summon the uh, Blood Knights or the Knights of the First Keep Phantoms and uh, have them surround and hopefully soon and destroy this Hell Cannon, which is such a threat to our infantry and our cab. Aberash comes down. The 
gate we're still working on it and looks like we'll be working on it for quite the while as well and did try to send our single unit of cav up to uh, deal with it but it looks like uh, well a decent amount of them will have gone through gonna pop a spell that rain of blood and fire upon the enemy hopefully that didn't kill our single cav unit out here and hard to tell but it's only damaged a few of the enemies and hopefully thereby powered up Aberash uh, by making him hit a little bit harder. He's chasing around the enemy lord now who by the looks of it had a very bad day. And certainly doesn't want to give Aberash a fight while our disciples or inner circle units are... <laughs> <laughs> It'll be an episode or two. Uh, our inner circle units have all landed in the biggest blob of elites uh, that, that they could find. Two units of Kadai, there are some Chaos Dwarf Wars of Great Weapons. Oh, here's another unit of Kadai. And Bull Centaur Renders as well. Looks like Aberash has brought the enemy lord down. But the Inner Circle Disciples are going to have to hold back quite a few units while we continue working on that gate. Though fortunately we do have a fair bit of healing on them and they are pretty darn tanky uh, by the looks of it. 4 units and 11k HP and divided by that. Otherwise, while we are not yet through the gate, we have entered the city with at least a few of the um, a few of the disciples of the path. We sent them up the walls. They do have perfect vigor, and thus they climbed up and then simply climbed down. And it's another benefit of having units with such small unit count or model count, such that they can get up the walls and over them really, really quickly. And so much bigger units take absolute ages to climb. So now that they're in here, they're facing off against some Infernal Guard and Bull Centaur renders, but I would imagine that is at least decently in our favor. Aberash continues to fight the enemy elites as he can, bringing a Bale Taurus not down, but certainly making it run away. And then he'll be facing off against the other single entities as well. And the enemy Kadai are not having the greatest of days against the Circle of Blood and the Knight Riders, our inner circle units. And by the looks of it, we'll be obliterating them sooner rather than later. Man, all the, all the little mini dragons together kind of looked like their heads were uh, emerged for a second. Almost looked like a Hydra. Which would be appreciated. I'm talking about the Alpha Legion Hydra symbol, not the uh, Dark Elven War Hydra here. As it looked like it had three heads, not like many, many. Uh, but anyway, let's see what we got here. The Bounce Power is still in the enemy's favor, so they still have a fair amount of units on the field. You have to be careful about the enemy Infernal Guard with Fire Glaives and just sort of running around and getting shots up at us. There we go, there's the Pew Pew. I love that sound. I uh, love the pew pew laser units. Anyway, we continue to hold back the elites with our inner circle units. I mean, I guess these guys aren't inner circle for no reason, because it's taking the enemy an absolute age to bring them down. One of them has uncovered its healing cap, and they're both down to about a quarter, or by a quarter, I should say, of their HP. And that is with, I remind you guys, with continued heals coming down upon them. All right, and well, the fire glaives certainly aren't helping. We're going to try to break through the enemy, though the mass of the uh, dwarfen units, the infernal guard and whatnot, uh, are making it difficult to break on through. But we finally do, at least against this unit of fire glaives. And there we go. And the fire glaives are not going to stand a chance in melee against, well, I guess our own glaive infantry. We've got the superior glaives here, I would say. So that little fight will continue, though I'd say we are also probably not very threatened by the uh, uh, by the enemy hobgoblin wolf raiders firing on us. Certainly not nearly as much as uh, as those fire glaives. Though I wouldn't underestimate hobgoblin wolf raiders either when I uh, played Zatan way back when. I found those units to be extremely effective particularly for their cost. 
And they could certainly knock a bunch of elites out before they uh, before they ever reached your own battle lines by skirmishing. So they can they they had damage. They had it. Anyway, it looks like the main enemy line is finally broken, and we're continuing to chase them down here. But by the looks of it, the entire enemy army will soon break. Once again, fantastic job to uh, the inner circle uh, units. And both of which, by the looks of it, will have done tons and tons of damage. And by the time the battle is over. Alright, looks like there's one last unit on the field, and it's just the remnants of this already destroyed uh, Hell Cannon. Uh, but the dwarfs that are crewing it are still unbreakable, so they have to be killed down to a dwarf. There we go, the dragons will land. And with that... The battle is ours. We certainly don't need to chase, though perhaps could have used a couple more seconds to heal units, but we, well, hopefully we're good at this point. Anyway, a heroic victory and a very, very nice fight as Jarnagrund. All right, very nice, very nice. The Chaos Doors were certainly able to hold on for a while there, but at the end of the day, not well enough. Gotta appreciate the Infernal Iron Sword and the other units that were able to hold the line and had sufficient mass for us to have difficult time moving through them in order to get to the back line. Some very decent damage out of several units of the enemy fire glaives. Uh, but, uh, well, that one was hardly surprising. Uh, uh, 31 kills on this Infernal Guard, that's probably a zombie unit kill, or at least I would imagine. Uh, though we did lose some of our units here, it looks like we were able to recover all of them. Anyway, uh, we are, well, it's tempting to get the 33k, and it's tempting to get the 10 money, or 10 metal, which may as well be money at this point, but we gotta construct a new blood keep, so, and that's what we'll do. All right, and the reason, okay, free, free money and stuff, there's a free researcher and whatnot. All right, so obviously we cannot build a library here because there isn't one, but I think we are going to have to build a defensive structure here. Uh, even with it being tier four, I just don't think we're going to stick around. Well, at the very least, we're not going to stick around with Aberash. So, waste of metal or not, without the library structure... Something needs to defend it. Actually, speaking of the library structure, uh, you have begun the construction of it. Good. And how close is the Abyssal Rep? Oh, he can upgrade to tier 4. Went to tier 5, and then we'll have to get that Ordo Profundum Headquarters, which is 20k, which we have, but uh, the 15 metal. Now, that will definitely take some effort. All right. Either way, I believe we are good other than the Abyssal Revenant possibly fighting. I guess the question is, do we have enough unit HP to fight a worthy foe or possibly a quest battle? I would imagine that the quest battles at this stage are going to be a little bit easier than the worthy foes, and there was one, you, a noble's enthralled disdain, which will spawn a legendary hero, so maybe this is a good thing to do right now, uh, just to get, well, another legendary hero on the field. Plus, it'll be bonus casualty or punishment, so these guys will most likely heal up. I think I've convinced myself. A noble's enthralled disdain. Not much is known of this wandering blood knight, but rumors persist of his undying hatred of the Chaos Warbands. Perhaps such a warrior could be useful in the trials to come. Let's find out. Alrighty, so Lothar Harkin, and there he is, Rabe von Stahl. Uh, we got a bunch of Grave Garden Thralls, which shouldn't be really threatening at all, but uh, there are some other units, you know, some Trakenhof Templar Sky Reavers, and some Oathbound Revenants as well, which are pretty interesting. Looks like they have a Regen, Frenzy, and Guardian, and some kind of different lands formation, Unholy lands formation, which gives them Devastating Flanker. Nice. Wait, what does our, what does our thing do? It also has similar stuff. Ah, 50% mass, so... Yeah, 50% mass and Devastating Flanker. The Unholy Lands formation appears to be inconsiderably stronger. That's lovely. I wonder how effective these guys are. What are what are they exactly? 
Black Knights out, but that, that could just mean that they're derived from a Black Knight units. I guess we're about to find out. Away we go. Such meek prey. The shackles of service I am bound to shall me greatly. No doubt these fools, Necrohatch, only have one objective in mind the pursuit of their coveted prophecy and the gathering of flesh materials. So, but what words can be found in such pathetic stock? Welcome, but what's this I see? Well, how can his newly reborn order take the field? <laughs> At best, my masters will be killed, ending my service. <laughs> At worst, I shall have new riders to join my revenants. What a glorious day! Path beckons. Alrighty, here we go. Another, uh, another legendary hero if we can find him. And here's that you. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, Rabe von Stalin. Uh, actually looking pretty darn good. Alright, I like the, uh, I like uh, the color scheme that he's got going on there. I can't tell if he's got a lance or maybe this is... His sword when drawn is just the uh, and the effect is there. Of course, he has a banner as well. And now let's take a look at those oath-bound revenants that he's got. All right, so they seem to be. Okay, wait. I think there's another one over on this side as well. Or am I wrong? Yeah, maybe I'm wrong this time around. Uh, they seem. It's a little bit of a dark map. They seem to be hooded and perhaps a unit of chaos knights by the looks of it. Very similar to Chaos Knights. Yeah, we got uh, Chaos Barding, just skeletal steeds, but generally speaking, uh, Chaos Units. And obviously, well, the, the Revenants themselves are skeletal as well. What do we have in terms of uh, stats here? 80 and 63, pretty hard hitting and regeneration frenzy. They do have fire weakness, but they have that unholy lance formation and guardian as well as some um, uh, physical resistance. So unfortunately for them, we do primarily magical damage. Anyway, we're going to start the battle off. Abrash will head towards the enemy lord, but he's only a level one and thus will not be giving him that much of a contest. And we don't really need to uh, pay attention to that. There was a aerial duel to be had, and that is the enemy Sky Reavers versus our own Inner Circle Disciples, and it's one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -two, depending on how you look at it. And I do believe we have the superior aerial units in this contest. The... Let's see, Disciples of the Path release this unit managed to lose about a quarter of their HP and has badly damaged the Drakenhof Templar Sky Reavers, who are currently getting an invocation of the heck on them, but we can invocate it with our own units, so. And that's just fine, and I have a feeling we'll be able to outheal the enemy. Especially over time, and especially as we out-damage them on these guys. Anyway, it looks like the aerial battle is nearly ours. One of the units of Drakenhof Templar Sky Reavers uh, drops, and then we can join the fray with the rest of the Inner Circle units. To kill off the rest of the enemy, and big bats. Not biggest bats, but big bats. I guess the cataphracti would be the uh, biggest bats in this particular case. We also do summon a unit of zombies and a unit of phantoms in the first keep to hold the enemy army off. I was hoping to keep Mr. Rabe here held in place until uh, Aberash was ready for him, or rather than him move into the center of the fray, where potentially uh, our own units and more our other units might kill him off. Fortunately, Aberash is no longer busy and while well, slightly busy trying to actually land here. <laughs> I see they haven't, uh, they haven't really fixed the uh, landing thing. Well, I mean, it's better than it used to be. 
I mean, I remember when uh, Total Warhammer was released and then Kairos and the uh, Bloodthirsters and all the flying demons were having a lot of trouble landing a lot of the time. It's better than it used to be, uh, certainly. Anyway, nice uh, little uh, contest between these two, but it looks like Rabe is very much in a bad shape. And a couple more hits will have Aberash uh, bring him down. The rest of his forces fighting as well. You know what? I do like this. Uh, d I do like this dark map. All the uh, reddish units that we have, the glow of the Phantoms of the First Keep, the uh, Bale Fire, or the well, the bluish Bale Fire glow of our zombies, the uh, red of the uh, Glaives as well. It all stands out in stark contrast against the uh, against uh, the darkness, which I like. And we got the Bale Fire glow in the eyes of the Grave Guard as well. If you're going to fight on a dark map, it's always great when it's, or it's always best, I should say, when it is the undead that you are or that you're fighting because they allow you to see them. Over on this side, we have a little bit of a contest against those Oathbound Revenants or another unit of them as they fight against the Bloodkin Asper and Tan, some of the Disciples of the Path warriors. And though by the looks of it, they are getting quite mobbed and brought down. Perhaps with their lord defeated, uh, they just don't have it in them to continue fighting, but they do seem to be weaker than the uh, Doom Knights are. Alright. Well, they do, however, have more opportunities to get into combat as another unit of reinforcements arrives on the field. Aberash, as usual, will head directly towards the enemy lord and get that duel going. Well, we can send our other units to hunt down and the rest of the enemy. It looks like there's still a few Grave Guard on the field here, but it will be fewer and fewer with every second and soon. It will be none. They are now getting surrounded by our much more elite vamps. And we can even leave with our inner circle units as they won't be needed in this cleanup. All right, enemy lord is starting to take hits from Aberash, though it also looks like he is running away, or at least he was running away, but now is fighting. That invocation of the heck made him brave. Here come those Oathbound Revenants, and we're going to get a nice uh, zombie dragon breath from all of our disciples. It is going to miss quite a bit, but I'm willing to bet that if it didn't miss so much, it would be uh, uh, quite devastating. To any unit, no matter how elite. Still does about a 15% HP, and I did want it on cooldown, because otherwise it's unlikely that we'd ever use them all. And here we go, landing among those Oathbound Revenants, surrounding them and dishing out massive amounts of damage incredibly quickly. A couple more hits, and it looks like the Revenants will be sent back to the grave. Alrighty, and a weak binding now, about 20% HP remaining, a couple more hits on you. The rest of our forces are, I believe, slowly making their way towards this portion of the battlefield, but it looks like this portion of the battlefield is already pretty much ours. Oh, I like the mix of the uh, Balefire and the orange of the eyes of the, uh, of the steeds on those things. Those are like the two main glows that we have in this army. I appreciate it. Anyway, here come our units of Disciples of the Path Knights smashing in once again to those Grave Guard, who once again again have no chance against them. And uh, gonna pretty much break these guys apart quickly, but we've got even more reinforcements arriving on the field from upon this hill and behind us as well, and there are more Oathbound Revenants among them. All right. Well... I enjoyed watching them fight once, and I'm willing to bet I'll enjoy it again. Aberash will head directly towards the enemy lord, gonna get hit with another one of those spirit leeches. While the Oathbound Revenants come down, they will smash into the Blood Dragon Neophyte Warriors and our Knights of the First Keep. But they'll get countercharged by our super elite units, our Disciples of the Path Inner Circle. And thus they will get surrounded, pinned between the Disciples of the Path and, well, more Disciples of the Path and Ghosties. And the Oathbound Revenants will pretty much lose all of their HP within seconds. Absolutely horrible place for them to be. There is also a White King around here, it seems. In which we're kind of ignoring in favor of killing off the Revenants and the, uh, and the other elites. Speaking of killing off, the enemy lord is down to about half HP, or this is what, the third enemy lord? 
Amaraz just loses count, and did he just get ripped in half? What the heck was that? <laughs> was that his torso? Oh my, that, uh, well, that must not have been super pleasant. Although, frankly, Vlad has come back from worse. And other vampires have, so who knows? Anyway, anyway, nice little 1v1 here. I decided to send the Disciples of the Path Knights to fight the enemy Oathbound Revenant Knights one-on-one -on -one just to see how the two would fare against each other. And by the looks of it, pretty okay that we did heal our units. Better than losing units, I suppose. But let's uh, watch him exchange a few more blows as the rest of the army slowly converges on our army. Slowly converges on the enemy's newest and, I believe, a last reinforcements. And four Oathbound Remnants remaining. And there we go. The last reinforcements have our inner circle and drop down among them. And just absolutely start ripping them apart. Just a few more hits, and I wager the battle will be ours completely. Those Graveguard almost uh, almost paralyzed, almost look like they don't know exactly what to do about all this. And there we go. With that, the last of the Graveguard will perish, and the battle in a heroic victory will be ours. All right. All right, well, that one was no problem. Now that we have upgraded our army, we are uh, back in action in terms of uh, uh, having uh, the stronger uh, units, which is great. Looks like the uh, inner circle units are doing fantastically so far and just pumping out that damage, 43k and 32k. Abra didn't cast any damaging spells, but... Uh, yeah. 19k, pretty solid for just chasing around enemy lords for the entire fight. Now, let's see what you do, Mr. Rabe. Uh, we are going to... Because we could heal up a little bit. Potential for an auto-resolve next turn. Yeah, it's not like we need the 1.7k yet. Though, just wait. We'll, uh, we'll probably get a bunch of stuff and then uh, that we need to build and then we'll run out of money. Warrior Ascendant Gear Dragon Crest Reforged. Let's check that out, shall we? And Tor Quest Complete Tor Car. Tor Car. Uh. Tor Car. Tor Car. Tor Car is. Is it not a elven territory? Hmm. Just judging by the Tor. Like half, half, half of the things in here are named Tor something. Ah, there it is, tour car. Oh, well, probably could have spotted that with a that looks like a sort of can marker. Hmm, interesting. Huh. What would happen if Abaraz tried to wield the sword? Uh, but anyway, uh, we are going to check out what new item we got. Some of the worthy arcane forge breastplate gauntlets of the first sword reforge we got last time. Dragon crest. First of many shattered aegis. Huh. Wait, what did we just get? Something Crest Reforged? Wait, 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 wait. Let me just see here. Warrior Ascendant Gear, it's an armor. The Dragon Crest Reforged. The Dragon Crest Reforged. I don't see it. Huh. I wonder if it's broken. We don't have it at all. I suppose we could have gotten something else, but I think we had everything here already. Hmm. Well, that's a little bit of uh, an unfortunate aspect, but uh, well, what are you gonna do? I wonder if it was, uh, if it was good. Oh well, what can you do? Uh, let us continue in the meantime, and what we're going to continue with is a battle against Gorok. Abyssal Revenant wants to have some more fun after all. Sadly, Vermont Bachman won't be able to join us here, but that's all right. Uh, Zacharias, you won't be able to approach us either. Though you do want to move to Shlanhopek, uh, you are going to attack this regardless of what's in here. Please don't go around the mountain. 
Don't go around the mountain. Don't. Don't. Okay, good. Man, when they go in, they go all the way around. It's just... Ugh. Alrighty, what do we have here? I mean, it's not the craziest army to be sure, but I still want to... I think we can still fight this one. It'll be a little fight, a bit of fun fight nonetheless. The Temple Guards and, heck, even the Saurus and certainly the Horned Ones are all going to still be a problem for the Bloodkin Thralls. They're still basic units and... Oh, damn, I forgot to take a look at Rabe. Okay, we'll do it after this. We'll do it after this. All right, here we go. Profundum is back. More work for the uh, skeletal danger noodles uh, in the Abyssal Revenants mount and the mount of Dagonithica here. Speaking of Dagonithica, we've got a, a little bit of a cooldown from the start of the battle until he can transform, but transform he shall as soon as he is ready. Empty dead once again looking pretty darn uh, solid here. 66 melee attack and melee defense at 46 is actually pretty low, but I'm willing to bet that uh, uh, they're less fragile than they may seem. All right, here we go, and we're going to transform now. I think I missed it the first time, and ah, it uses that uh, uh, that water casting spell. Same thing you see when you summon rotting Prometheans onto the field, which I do believe the Abyssal Revenant at least has, and then the uh, big old skeleton danger noodle uh, comes out of that. A lovely. Anyway, our units are making their way up the hill towards the enemy. The Abyssal Revenant is going to move in and maybe try to chase a few of the enemies down. Trees are probably going to be in his way, and he was hoping to hit a few of the enemy Pterodon Riders, of which there are many in here. And I've already lost sight of him. There he is. Alright, I'm going to try to give chase to those Pterodon Riders while the rest of our army approaches. We have a big blob of a Bloodkin Thralls led by our two units of Empty Dead. And then on the flanks we have two units of our Bloodkin Thrall adepts on the left, closer to our army. And then further from our army we have four, such that they can support each other wherein the army cannot support them, like uh, there could be some mutual support between these two units. Anyway, Abyssal Revenant comes down and drops drops upon Ngorok here, starting to uh, uh, try to, I don't know, crush the Rock of Itza. But that's a lot of buffs on Gorok, and I do believe he would probably outstats the Abyssal Revenant uh, just on paper when he does that. It looks like the Pterodon Riders who we were chasing ironically decide to land to help Gorok out, but, uh, well, I'm not sure that that's going to be enough from them. In addition to that, Gorok decided to take their sacrifice and book it on out of there. So he'll move towards our lines while we fight those uh, skinks and saurus and whatnot. And hopefully we'll be able to catch back up with him in a few. See there an effect coming in in the woods somewhere. We also have our... Uh, wait, not the Abyssal Revenant. We also have the Dagonithica sort of moving around, trying to dish out some damage. In a snake form. Alright, just watching the snake do snake things oh, while we're here. Anyway, let's see if the enemy is any closer to overrunning our lines, at least over on this side. We have a limited amount of uh, units on this rightmost flank, so we are going to send the snakes in to help out a little bit. Main line is all the way back here. I mean, honestly, at this point, it seems like the uh, two lines have split. We are chasing down the enemy skinks and other inconsequential units with our added thralls, and once those supporting units are dead, we'll have them move in to the main enemy line of Soros and such. All right, and Horned Ones facing off against some of the Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knights. But by the looks of it, the Horned Ones were just a teensy bit too fragile. Here comes that Kuatl riding, skeletal Kuatl riding, and Abyssal Terror to deal with Gorok. Frankly, we're going to not need any of these troops here, as keeping them nearby is just another opportunity for Gorok to bring them down.
All right, and with that, the enemy army will shatter, but it looked like fit from the very, very start that the enemy army itself was not particularly strong, but Gurok is... Uh, what's the unbreakable? That's where I was thinking invincible, but he's very much not invincible. But he is unbreakable, at least for now. And, okay, for a second I thought he disappeared and all that, uh, and all that fog. Or mist or whatever. Alright, a couple more hits from you, Abyssal Revenant. He's down to 17k HP. A little bit hard to, uh, see the, uh, and what's going on due to the animations taking them up in the sky. Gotta love that Kawada lightning breath animation, though. Never complain about that. Alrighty, and Gorak has 537 HP. One more hit should do it. And down he drops at last. Alright. All right, very, very nice. We've got a little bit of chasing to do, or actually, do we got a little bit of chasing to do? He did run, which means his army will be destroyed regardless, uh, and we don't care about the chase, we just care about the little bit of extra time we take to heal up. Anyway. Alright, poor Gorok and his army got crushed, but once again we got to watch the, uh, the snaky boys get it on. Slanashi giggle? No, no, no. Lizardman giggle. Lizard giggle? Uh, anyway. <laughs> Possibly Sota giggle. Uh, the uh, skink priest might be into the whole thing, at least a bit. Anyway, uh, where were we? What am I talking about? Uh, Gorok's army is crushed. We have no purpose in enthralling the captives because, well, we are going to take the money. Because we're at full HP. I guess we could take the XP, but it's only 100. It's probably not worth our time. And a terrifying mask of V, as well as that expert charge defense for defeating Gorok and Reptilian Ravager and a student for a Dagonithica. We could go into raiding stance, but I think we're marching till the Shalon Hopak so that we can uh, knock it down soon. We will keep an eye out on any more tier 5 settlements, as I think maybe those are the only ones worthy of becoming a blood keep at this point. Especially because I really, once again, don't want to defend them. Anyway, let's see. What do we have? Edmund von Sinclair. I've already checked you. Alright, so that means I think we're good to end the turn, yes? Presuming nothing needs to get built, we still need to save up metal for an... Oh, Anarchy, yes. I take it you can't go into encamp stance now, because I forget... Yeah. He still has to build up this thing. All right, so I guess he'll do that after raising the the, uh, the Schlamm effect. I was about to say raising the Abyssal Revenant because it was like it was like this under the settlement. I was like, wait a second. How can one raise oneself when one has no life? Because he's undead. Anyway, let's uh, let's continue. I see Callard just tried to assassinate Vermont Bachman. Well, that would have been really unfortunate, considering how long it took us to get the guy here. And confederation between the Western Provinces and Burning Wind Nomads. All right, I guess they got really, uh, they got really freaked out. Oh, they're going to besiege us with some garbage armies, but it does prevent us from healing. Oh, this is just the AI being irritating, as this probably doesn't really help it. But anyway, uh, wounded? You have got to be kidding me. We just get him on the field, didn't even get a chance to look at him and he gets wounded. <laughs> well, I can't say I've ever seen that. Uh... <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, well, what can you do, guys? What can you do? I really should have taken a look at him last turn. Oh, uh, well, now we can't. Anyway, Anarch, I guess you're going to continue despoiling territories all the way to, but not quite all the way to Skarsnik. Uh, I guess we can raid and then keep moving down here. I think what we can do is sort of move around these territories. Oh, he's got plenty of settlements. Uh, move through Karazakarak, which is not tier 5. Uh, sort of go around and maybe hit Sylvania again. 
I mean, it's unlikely that we'll ever be able to get a uh, alliance with them. It's kind of what I wanted, but it, yeah, it's not looking likely. And Reinhardt's army, there's no way that they're going to be able to take this. I'm actually not sure that they can take this either. Depends on what's in these armies. And oh, it's piles of Bugman's Rangers as well, which... Well, they do lack armor piercing, or I mean, they have very little enough armor piercing, but the Bloodkin Thralls are not super heavily armored either. Hmm, iffy. I wonder if I could bait them into something, but anyway, anyway, let's, uh, let's see what else we can do that we're pretty much out of time at this. This is really not worth fighting. Wallach's army would absolutely obliterate everything I hear. I think we're just gonna honor Oh, it killed off our Bloodkin Thralls! Damn it, auto resolve! You got me. Ah, <laughs> uh, I didn't even think that. Uh, I almost kind of forgot that we had that one bloodkin thrall in here. We can rebuild one, I guess, or just leave him dead and put another hero in here. Hmm. Hmm. I guess heal up. Yeah, I, that, that's what I get for auto resolving that one. It was a weak force too, in my defense. Uh, well, now we have to, I guess, stay, sit here and heal up. You know what? Sit outside the settlement and heal up where they can't stop you and rebuild your one bloodkin thrall at level one, though. Unfortunate. I wonder if we're gonna make him into a cataphract or go four and four with the blood dragon vets rather than three and four. I haven't really decided. But either way, let's keep on moving. You have a date with Castle Carcass Sun. Uh, I guess you're going to have to move through Fort Saul. Can you actually pass it? No, you cannot. Ooh, more of the... I want to say orcs. And then I wanted to say ogres, but dwarfs nearby. Hmm. Might it be worth to assault a keep with this army? You know what? It might, but I feel like we won't have the time this episode to do it at the very least. I sincerely doubt it. So I think instead I'm going to call the episode here. There's not enough time to find another battle and there is some admin to do, oh, but uh, none of the interesting variety. Uh, next time... Wait. A moment, we have a new tech to select. Ooh, missile resistance for all Drakenhof Templars. Lots of armor for... Yeah, you know what? Maybe we should power up the Dragonhoff Templars at least a little bit. Hello. Soul Scent. Arm piercing weapon damage plus up to 50 and mana attack plus up to 20 for the veteran warriors in inner circle, so for their elites, eh? But I think, yeah, I want the extra armor favored by the people. Oh, I really wish it didn't take the uh, Martial Valor for it, but probably still worth it. And I know that there's buffs for Thralls in here that we probably want to uh, focus as well. Okay, this is for Thrall Knights and Monsters. This is for Thrall Knights and Monsters. This is also for Thrall Knights and Monsters. Ooh, immunity contact effects for some good stuff. Where's the Thrall upgrades? Ah, they're down here. So we'll need to get Subjugate the Citizens. Ah, fine, we'll get Subjugate the Citizens first. Uh, I think Thrall infantry upgrades and Blackguard upgrades are going to be the uh, and the most valuable ones. Anyway, anyway, as I said, we're going to call it here. Next time we'll probably do a Worthy Foe Fight or another Quest Fight. Oh, we still got to do that Trident of Mathland, so maybe we'll uh, try to focus that down. And Dragon's Bay and Arcane. Yeah, I was just double checking if there was a uh, if there was a quest item with the same name, Dragon Crest Reforged, that we just didn't get just now. But oh well, uh, I didn't see one here. But it could be from a different quest. Uh, calling it here. More Blood Dragons to come. So stay tuned. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.